So I got to start this interview off with a little bit of a preamble, because this interview took some work to get, took a lot of harassing Zeto. Now, he probably would have finished at the same speed if I hadn't harassed him regularly, but I considered it an important part of getting this interview. I also want to say, Seto is just obviously one of the best Triple Triad players ever, if not the absolute best. He is, I think, the all-time great player whose games, when I look at, make the least intuitive sense to me. I remember very early on, I kind of locked into the best four players on the site are Seto, Delial, Karmazin, and Koner in some order. And when I watched Koner games, they made sense to me. That was the play I tried to be more like. Um, and I played a bunch of games against Delial, and that was a little bit in a different direction, but that also was something I sort of tried to work towards. And Karmazin, and even more than that, Seto, just seemed to be playing a kind of different game than the one I was perceiving. And there kept being games I'd watch where... I thought things were going poorly for him, and I was just evaluating them completely wrong. So he has always been a really fascinating player for me because he clearly evaluates dynamics in both a different and better way than I do. And so I, I just think he's a really interesting uh, player as well as being uh, quite clearly the greatest player I have interviewed so far and possibly the greatest player I could interview. So here is our interview with Seto, also known as Karama, also known briefly as Vivi when he entered um, some tournament under that name, possibly a tournament we'll talk about later, I forget which one it was, and uh, also Lelouch and Sasuke. He's been a tricky one to get the tournament records right on, a complaint I'm going to be making in a bunch of interviews coming out around now. How would you describe your triple triad play or style? Combo Reliant. I find I tend to rely on setting up combos or moves that have the best potential to combo the board, rather than going for outright power. It's been a bit of a double-edged sword in tournaments. Sometimes the combo setups work in my favor, sometimes I just get overpowered on the right draw. It's very clear Seto chooses his hands based on dynamic potential, both a lot of ability to same and plus, but also plus wall. Cards like 8765 show up really frequently in Seto hands. I'm reminded of a absolutely the game he won clan league with uh beating sir smokes that i put up a video of fairly recently where it's not only that he's setting combos up for him but he has this wonderful feel for where his opponent is forced to combo and how he can play back on that and there are just two unbelievable games he's played in the return to the site one was against sir smokes in clan league where he plays this move in five where smokes his combos everywhere basically but it doesn't matter, because as soon as he combos, Seto combos back so hard, and if Smokes could play anywhere without comboing, Smokes would be fine. But Seto has both great combo feel for what he's doing and what his opponents are doing, which is part of why I wrote a bunch of articles early on, calling him the master of the weak corner, and we'll return to this theme later in the interview, because he kept playing moves that looked to me like they had weak outfacing stuff that seemed easy to handle, and somehow the opponent's plays would leave him with this absurd combo potential. And I think he's the player with the most feel for how much the opponents lock themselves into cards and positions that will help set Seto's cards up for combos. And I think that's just a really interesting, awesome trait that Seto has in his play. So he's combo-reliant, but it's in a different way than I would think of other players being. Who's your most interesting opponent? Interesting opponent is, well, a tough one to answer. I've played so many thousands of games against so many different players over the years, I'm probably overlooking some of the most interesting ones. Back in the day, I'd have said someone like Kamikaze. In recent memory, to be fair, my memory doesn't go very far back, I'd have to say Piggy or Aki. I find these two seem to come up with the most unorthodox counter moves and spots I've overlooked or disregarded, only to have it bite, my, bite me in the ass later in the game. This is a bit of an offshoot, but I forgot to say the other really just game where Se uh, Seto just did things that were unbelievable to me was in the uh, Triad Wars 14 semifinals against Akiyama, where he was on second turn and cards had been played in three, nine, and Akiyama had just played in four. 
and the solver says Seto has two tying moves there, and they're both kind of off the wall crazy. And I would have just lost this game. Just no doubt, I would have lost this game. And Seto finds a way to tie where he plays in one, not safely, not difficult to take, no combo back potential in the remotely near future, but he plays in one and specifically draws a card, Arania, out of Akiyama's hand in two. And after drawing that out of Akiyama's hand in two, he plays in seven, also weak out facing, but suddenly Seto, uh, Akiyama doesn't have cards he wants to put in eight without giving Seto combo potential. And it was one of those draw a card out that looks to have no need to have it drawn out of the opponent's hand to set up more combos later down the road, playing cards that are easily capturable, but there is combo potential that keeps coming later in the game. And I don't think I'm describing this very well, but it was this just unbelievable defensive concept that I would have just never found uh, that understood kind of sacrificing his own cards to get the opponent's cards on the board in the right squares in this mind-blowingly deep way. Who is your toughest opponent? Currently, Aki. That supercomputer quick play is a tough one to play against. I will add here that I think Seto is the only player who can, in the current era, match Akiyama in speed and still play as brilliantly. If he takes more than two minutes to make a move and open, it means he's actually calculating something, and I'm more or less screwed. Of all time, though, I'd have to say Yojimbo. He always had a great feel for the game, no matter the rule set, and he always prepared for each match like a madman. Yeah, Yojimbo, fantastic across the board, in one of those ways of just like... You know, you see people who are great at games, and there are the people who made it through talent, and the people who made it through hard work, and Yojimbo is very much just so much of both. What formation or move type do you like more than other players do? This can be either for open or closed, or answer for both. I enjoy setting up a Q formation, or the Z formation. All the Seto games that come to mind for me are not in standard formations, but I'm sure they do happen very regularly and he does them effectively. Maybe it's confirmation bias. Once you decide a player is really creative, you only remember their really offbeat concepts. But I can't actually remember a game he got a standard formation. That's weird. I hadn't really thought about that. What formation or move type do you like less than other players do? I hate the X setup. In close, there are too many variables, and it's often hard to make that a safe setup. Well, in open, it can be a bit confusing to calculate properly. I also generally dislike the weak corner starters. It just seems boring. Not that it makes a bad move. On the note of being able to calculate properly, I think there's a good, very good argument that Seto is the best calculator of all time. Uh, we now have quite a few records of people's play, and Seto is the only player... I don't have record making any mistakes move six or later, excluding one move where he mouse slipped. Uh, and just other than that, it's nothing. It's, it's pretty remarkable. I also generally dislike the weak corner starters. It just seems boring. Not that it makes it a bad move. Now, this is fascinating to me because it's, it's, it means I'm wrong in many things I've said about Seto's play because I have described him as the master of the weak corner. But come to think of it, the weak corners I've seen him play, or the cards that are just very vulnerable, but specifically in ways that draw cards out of the other person's hands, very much aren't starters. And this actually helps solidify in my head something I'd been confused by, because Seto is, obvious, is very clearly drawn to cards like Doom Train as a big corner starters. And really, that kind of starter has really appealed to him, and on level 9 sets I've seen him do that a whole bunch of times, both of recent, but also I have memories of like 2009-10, him doing that kind of thing on sets where it was available. And I think it thought of him as the master of the weak corner, but it isn't starters, it comes later in the game. And I think part of the reason for that, at least from my interpretation of Seto's play that I'm offering here, which he will presumably promptly say, no, that isn't right, and then, uh, you know, Okay, I'm wrong. 
but is when he plays these weak corners or these cards with weak values out facing, they have very specific calculation justification, very specific understanding of combo potential. And that's going to be a lot less true with weak corners at the start of the game, because weak corners at the start of the game are fundamentally the least forcing move type, right? Your opponent does not have to attack them immediately. They will have many ways to attack them later. There is no rush for them to do so. There is no threat that you're about to lock them in. And because they can capture them in so many ways, it's going to be hard to build uh, tricky tactical ideas based off it. So it's actually not going to appeal, but playing weak stuff out later will be able to very specifically attack the opponent's hands in really creative ways. So I think this actually does make sense to, be, to me now, and hopefully I have it right, but it's not something I'd understood. Because as I've said, I've described him as the master of the weak corner, and I think in one sense he is, because he's played so many spectacular moves just sacking cards. And not... Yeah, I guess that what I really want to say about his combo reliant play, this is changing topics a bit, but again, I think Seto is just this fascinating player, is a lot of people who are really combo focused play on the diagonal. And Seto certainly does this at an extremely high level. You know, a card's in one, you strongly consider playing moves in five, uh, both because they can set up adjoining squares, but potentially because they have potential combo power in future squares against future cards that might be played. That kind of move, you know, if you go diagonal to a card, you can set up in both adjoining squares. But he also does stuff, and I, I just keep saying this, but it's so interesting to me, where he plays a card that isn't setting up the combo potential itself, but any way the opponent wants to touch it or with moves he intends to play later that's where the combos are going to come into play. It's kind of this seeing ahead to combo potential rather than the combo potential that is immediately there that I think is really interesting. And any good player is going to do that to some extent, but I think he does it just so much more than other people do. Favorite way to meet a corner starter, a side starter, a center starter. If it's closed, generally I'll play the adjacent corner or in the middle. If it's an open game, it all depends on hand matchup and what looks like the best available move. Yeah, I haven't really seen patterns to how Seto meets corner or side starters in open play. I think he has a whole variety that is just very context dependent. Do you have a preferred starter type? Does that change between random and hand games? Does it change between open and closed? Open. Easy answer for me is the middle starter, especially if it's on a rule set with a pre-made hand. However, sometimes in random games, it's fun to throw a card in five when no other good starters jump out at me. Closed. Usually I end up in a corner or in five. It all depends on what combos I feel like I can set up off the start or how well I feel like I can bluff my way into one. So again, going to records I've kept, um, corner starters in open both in tournaments and outside, have generally performed significantly better than side starters and center starters. But I think they've performed even, this isn't proper English, but even more better than it looks, because fundamentally, Seto has won a whole bunch of games with center and side starters, and if you took them out of the data set, corner starters would have an even bigger advantage. But he, including against just absolutely top-notch opposition, has done really, really well with side and center starters and is one of the, again, most varied in move type players going. How do you spend time during the opponent's move? Thinking specific lines, thinking about general things, spacing out. Back in the day when I was very actively playing tournaments, I would be checking opponent's moves and possible counter moves I could make, wondering what I missed. I wanted to always win, so I took it seriously. Nowadays, I don't care as much, so I'll be checking my phone, reading Discord, finding a song to play, etc. Hmm. One, one thing about Seto that I've actually sort of thought of emulating in the return is he tends not to play that many tournaments in a row. And I think he did a bit at the start, but most of the time, um, for instance... Actually, let's just get to the next question, and then I'll come back to this. What is your proudest triple triad moment? 
It's a tough question. I can't narrow it down to one. If I had to choose, it would be between my Triad Wars 8 run or any of my Clan Leagues or Clan Wars championships. So on Triad Wars 8, I think he hadn't played a few tournaments. You know, he had like skipped a year of tournaments before winning Triad Wars 8. And I think it was the only tournament he played. And I think it was... No, that's 2010. In 2010, he wins Triad Wars 8. Yeah, in 2011, he wins Ward. It's the only tournament he played that year. He played maybe two tournaments in 2010. Uh, His record is just very much, you know, play a tournament or two, skip a couple tournaments, come back when you have the motivation or interest, or maybe when someone bullied him in chat. I don't know. But I think that is a way that helps, for some of us, not burn out. And I wonder if that's the case for him. And it's thinking about that has helped me think about whether I want to, you know, skip certain events and how many events I want to play. It's something Turds and I had a recent conversation about, about how we both think it is easier to not burn out and maintain a really high level when you play. Um, if you can come back with motivation. And the thing about Seto is he takes these breaks and it would be so easy to have your form just disappear, right? And come back and not be sharp at the game. And you don't even see him playing that many practice games when he's done it over the years. He's just comes back and is so immediately fantastic at the game. And presumably like even better when he's really uh, involved and focused and all that. But I think his baseline level is already really high though i'm sure like any top player he thinks it's garbage in half the games but i I think it's very clear he is one of the players with the highest baseline level of can be doing nothing to do with triple triad at length come back play an event and just if you're going to take any one player to win an event after playing not a single game of triple triad for a year i i would bet on seto uh, I also want to say is Triad Wars 8 run. Now, I've done a whole bunch of different rankings of the best tournament runs ever, but for a while, this was my pick for the best win of all time, and I can make that pitch pretty easily. Uh, in six rounds, he played five tournament winners. Between his five tournament winner opponents, they won a grand total of let's look quickly and count. Um they have won a grand total of, I believe, 18 tournaments between them. Um, he beat two players who are in the GOAT conversation. Arguably three, actually, of his six opponents are, or of his, yeah, of his six opponents are in the GOAT conversation. And a fourth isn't that far behind. It's an insane run. He beats Bren in the first round. He beats Soli in the second round, which is honestly like a fairly tough first two rounds. And then just unbelievable run after that of Yojimbo, Delial, Great Sephiroth, and MC in the finals. Yeah, absolutely insane run. MC had beaten myself, Turds, Koner on the way there. And uh, yeah. If not the best tournament run of all time, it's no worse than third. And this is just a very good case for, yeah, that's easy, number one, who's in second. All right, uh, let's get, where did I put the interview? There you are. Should Delial be banned? Yes or absolutely? Absolutely not, unless I'm up against him for a tournament match. Should Elemental be abolished? Yes or immediately? No, we should have more Elemental rule sets in tournaments. Hmm. I might start a ban Seto movement. This is a very bad opinion. And this interview was going so well till now. What clan or clans will always have a place in your heart? Always will be Brotherhood of Seed for me. I've been in a lot of clans in my triple triad career, but it's always been the one where I felt like I belonged the most. Player you think is most underrated? For different reasons, Dalimar and Turds. Dalimar plays some great moves, seemingly out of nowhere, but I feel like he's so often multitasking that he loses sight of what he had planned. I also really respect that he makes hands from his favorite cards. Favorite is spelled wrong. Uh, I also really respect that he makes hands from his favorite cards, not necessarily what might be the best cards on a given rule set. In Turds' case, who the hell names themselves Turds anyway? I don't think he gets enough recognition for his solid play in open. 
There are some of the better players on the site I feel I match up well against, but he's one I've never been able to get a handle on when it comes to open. He's got very good instincts and is strong at calculating positions. You can't take him lightly. He also usually kicks my ass in closed, but is a good enough sport to make me think we're about even. Who are your top three to five picks for GOAT? Probably pretty close to what most people have. Yoji, Aki, Delial, Waz. So the unconventional pick there, obviously I think he didn't say himself because it always looks bad to say yourself, but I'm going to, of course, throw Seto in there. Um, Akiyama is, of course, the non-traditional pick because he wasn't around in the traditional days. Admittedly, neither were Yojimbo or I. But uh, it is pretty clear that just about everyone who has spent significant time on the site while Akiyama has been here thinks he is one of the greatest players, and my numbers will pretty soon have him in the top 10 uh, for tournament stuff uh, once he gets a few more under his belt. When did you start playing, and what was your favorite era? I started on the very, very late stages of TTX. I can't pinpoint my favorite era or year, but I miss the days of logging on to see 20 plus games of various rule sets up at any time of day and tournaments fielding 64 to 128 players. Ah, uh, the nostalgia. Yeah. I don't think I ever got to see 20 plus regularly or anything close to that, but I can, I can imagine a, you know, pared down version of this and empathize with said nostalgia. Favorite rule set. Level one through seven, same plus plus wall combo. Yeah, he loves that um that seven, six, seven, four, and five Racelin hand. Ugh. Level ten, same plus uh same wall plus wall combo random trade. Yeah, legit. Have you met any other triple triad players in person? No. What is your biggest weakness as a player? You can evade the question if you think it's targetable. Nowadays, probably my lack of focus on the game or that I hardly play open anymore. I'm also a bit stubborn when it comes to handmaking. I find that I sometimes focus on same plus potential rather than balanced power, and when I lose, I often feel like it's from I feel like it's often from being overpowered. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the um the dynamics versus raw power decisions in any hand, Seto usually goes pretty heavily in the dynamics direction and usually i think that's he does it right but you're always going to get the occasional rule sets where your hand instincts just don't hit it and there are going to be rule sets where dynamic paths aren't the right path on the other hand he probably identifies those rule sets pretty well and adjusts so yeah i don't know i I've recently been putting together some win probability stats stuff and looking at hand matchup stuff, and from that it looks like Seto is just a very good tournament hand maker who regularly makes strong, advantageous positions, uh, hand decisions, and comes into the games in good positions, and then makes complex moves and outplays his opponents. You know, what you'd expect. Uh, so that's all I got from Seto. Uh, Really, really glad to have gotten this interview. Thanks so much for doing it and offering the detail you did here. And uh, yeah, it's the first legitimate goat contender I've done an interview with. And uh, really, really glad to have gotten it. I hope I didn't go on too much about my takes on his style because they are probably wrong. As I said, I think he's the most, uh, for me, mystifying of the all-time great players. Though this might be somewhat affected by we've never played like a long random match or a long tournament match or anything. Just like a game here and there. But I've never gotten a feel for it and I feel I could learn a lot from it.